is our data, right? And now we have area equal to pi times this squared over 4. So that's pi times d squared over 4. That's 12.37 millimeters squared. So sigma 1 equals f1 divided by that megapascals sigma 2 equals that divided by that megapascals all I did was f over a okay so for steel allowable stress sigma yield is 250 megapascals so we are safe factor of safety equals sigma allowable divided by larger of these two things this is actually sigma allowed by sigma calculated maximum maximum of the sigma calculated in this case is 143 so factor of safety is 1.7 so that's not very safe but it's still okay now let's look at deflections u1 equals um, let's see, f times l over e over a mm u2 equals f2 times l divided by e over so the first one deflects by about 0.6 the second one deflects by about 2.04 so angle So if you go look at this, can you see, I'm looking at this angle. So tan theta is u1 over r, but because theta is very small, so I'm going to write it up here. So you can see, tan theta equals u1 over rb which is approximately theta in radians so what will happen is if we go all the way down here we will get angle so we we'll close the ink tools and we can say angle equals u1 divided by 2 thousand please remember you shouldn't do u1 divided by 2 units 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 okay this is radians which is equal to that times 180 divided by pi degrees so you can see deflex very slightly about 0 .0, 0 0.02 but we get a rough idea of what this thing works Okay, so I want you to understand how the whole sequence works. Let's go back over very quickly. 
So we had the problem. Our first step was external load identification. Second step is what are we looking for and what information do I need? Okay. In some cases, we have to pick the dimensions and material parameters if you are doing a design. Step three is load analysis. This is where we use free body diagrams, Newton's laws, summation of forces, summation of moments, that kind of thing. Okay. And if you don't have enough equations for enough unknowns, you will get a static, statically indeterminate system. No need to panic. You have to now look at the deflections and this is hard because you have to identify what is the connection between the deflections of the different pieces. How are they connected? In this particular case, the two pieces that we are interested in are connected by a rigid bar. Because they are connected by a rigid bar, we are going to use the fact that the bar is rigid and use similar triangles to get a relationship between the deflections of the two points. That is what this is. So at this stage, we have five equations and three, three unknowns. Sorry, three equations and five unknowns. They are highlighted in yellow. Okay. Once we know that, we have exhausted the relationships there, we now look at material analysis. How does the material respond? So notice that the interesting thing up to now is that the first two equations involves only forces because it comes from Newton's laws. The second equation, this pair, deflection analysis involves only deflections. Okay, the, the, the analysis that connects the two things is called a constitutive relation and this tells us how the material responds. In our case, we are assuming that it is a linear elastic material and since it is a uniaxial bar, we have a very simple connection between the axial load and the force which is that flee, you know I talked to you about displacement equal to FL over EA. So you will get equations 5 and 6 which will tell you how the deflections are linked. Then once you are done, you see I have now have 5 equations for 5 unknowns. These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What we are going to do in this particular case is to substitute and solve. So we systematically substituted 1 by 1. I took 5 and 6, substituted it into 4 and I got 3F1 equal to F2 took 7, substituted it into 3 prime and I got F1. F1 plus 9 F1 minus 6000, F1 was 600, F2 is 1800 and once you get all the information, then you can calculate the things that you need. Now we are looking at the major step which is find the stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, uh, we know what is the yield stress, 250 mega pascals. And because sigma 1 and sigma 2 are both less than yield stress, we are safe. We can calculate the factor of safety which is the allowed divided by the largest of the calculated. Allowed divided by the max maximum of the calculated stress and that gives you a 1.74 factor of safety which is not very safe but it is okay. Then we can calculate the deflections and this comes from just uh, FL over EA and then uh, we can calculate the angles. Okay? I hope you got this. The last part which I am going to do is using matrices. For solving. Okay? Again to help us see this, I am going to blow this up a little bit. So, our idea